Hey, it's David Parrish again with World Missions and Evangelism, and welcome to our video blog where we love to come in each week to you and to share uh, with you what's going on in the world of world missions and evangelism and and talk about mission strategy and what God is doing. And so uh, that's what we're here to do. This is our weekly video blog, and we thank you for joining us. It's always a delight to talk to you. Now, uh, today, I first of all want to say I hope all of you had a great Thanksgiving last week. We did. We had a wonderful Thanksgiving time and uh, with family, and and uh, it, we we hope that you did the same. And now it's December, and we're coming up on the Christmas holidays, and we're thinking about the coming of Jesus Christ into this world. And you know the thing about the birth of Jesus is this. Jesus came into this world. He was God, but he became man. That's called the incarnation. He, he, God became man and, uh, he came into our world. And really, uh, that makes Jesus the ultimate missionary where he left the splendors of heaven and he came to our suffering, dying, hurting world. And aren't you glad that he did? Now, um, here at World Missions and Evangelism, we are focused on helping uh, the, the task of the advance of the kingdom of God by helping missionaries and by uh, not only helping missionaries and doing mission projects, but, pro but the number one thing we're doing is trying to empower, train and empower national leaders. So for instance, in Latin America, that means Latin Americans to make disciples and to start churches and to reach the unreached. And we've seen that happen in such a great way. You know, in the last year, uh, the last 12 months of our, la you know, we go back to from October of 2013 to the report we got in October of 2014. Do you know that there's been over 1,800 people baptized that have begun, you know, they've decided to follow Jesus Christ and obey him and be water baptized. Many have come to faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, new groups and churches. In that period of time, over 430, over 430 new groups or churches have started. I'm talking about in the last 12 months. There are over 8,000 people involved in the groups and churches now in this movement that's happening in Honduras primarily, but also over in other parts of the world. Uh, next, uh, actually the end of this week, uh, uh, Damien Pronak, who is, uh, a great man of God. He's associate pastor at Christian Fellowship Church. He and his wife and their boys are going to be going to Argentina. He's a native of Argentina and they're going to be doing the first informational training on church planning movements there in Argentina, in in our overall project, the NSTAR project. So we're very excited about that. I hope you'll be praying. I think it's the 12th and the 13th of December. They're flying, they're leaving on, on the 5th, but the, the conference will be the 12th and the 13th in Argentina. And uh, we're excited about this, the, the ability to be a part. Uh, he has mega voices, he has training materials, and he's gonna be doing an informational training and then the Lord willing, we're hoping to do a big training there later in the year, uh, late next year, uh, somewhere around September next year is our hopes. Uh, doors are opening. We're hearing reports. We don't have, uh, there's 859 groups and churches, over 8,000 people involved in them. Uh, that was on our last report in October, which is the last hard numbers that we have. But we're hearing reports from what's going on in Honduras, and we're hearing that there's a breakthrough uh, on a university campus down there, and that there are many, many new groups that are starting up. We're just excited. We're looking forward to getting uh, our report. We will be getting another report. We get one every three months. We do an assessment. And we'll be getting that assessment at the end of December. So we'll be talking about it in the new year. But uh, it, God is just doing so many amazing things. And every one of these things relates to individuals. So, well, you're throwing out a lot of numbers. Well, let me tell you about those 1,800 people that were baptized in the last 12 months. Every single one of them was an eternal soul. Each and every one was a, was, was a soul of inestimable value to the Lord Jesus Christ that Jesus died for. And so we're just excited about what God is doing. Now, 
Uh, today, I want to talk to you about why not church planning movements? Why not disciple making movements? By the way, we use those terminologies interchangeable. We talk about disciple making movements, we talk about church planning movements. We talk about disciple making movements because really that's what we're really doing. There's not a single command in the Bible anywhere. Nowhere in this book that I'm aware of does the Bible tell us to plant churches. There's not one command in the Bible to plant churches. There is a command to make disciples. He said, go and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and uh, teaching them to obey all things that I commanded you. Lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. That's the great commission. The command is to make disciples. And the, it starts off as disciple making, and it ends up being disciples making disciples making disciples. And, and as that begins to happen, that's what we call a disciple making movement. Well, then where does this phrase church planting movement come from? Well, guess what? When disciples come to Christ, when people become followers of Jesus, when they become disciples and they begin to meet together every week, to seek God and to read his word and to study his word and to go forth, that is a nucleus of a new church. So really it's first, it's a disciple making movement. And then as it begins to get some structure and some organization to it, it becomes a church planting movement. But I'm just saying those words, I, I use them interchangeably. Some people talk mostly about disciple making movements. Others use the term church planting movements. We mean the same thing. As we make disciples, Christ builds his church. And a disciple-making movement will always result in a church planning movement. And so that's what we're seeing happen in Honduras and in Latin America in this Instar project. That's what we're seeing happen. 859 groups, 8,000 people. What are they doing? They're in the process of being discipled. They're being discipled to follow Jesus. And we want to see that just continue to multiply. It's seven generations deep right now. Seven generations deep. That means a group that planted 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 a group. Seven generations deep right now. And it's continuing to grow and multiply. Now, uh, I said I want to talk about why not, why not disciple making movements? Why not church planning movements? I've told before, I've said before on this video blog that I think the number one uh, question that I've ever been asked is, will this work in the United States? Will this strategy that you're seeing bear this fruit down in Latin America, will that work in the United States? People ask me that question, and my answer is yes, because it's really just simple biblical obedience is all it is. It's just simply obeying the Bible, making disciples, causing them to obey the Bible, and equipping them to make other disciples. It's very simple. And of course it'll work here in the United States. But sometimes, whether it's here at home or whether it's on the mission field, with uh, we run into people that say, I don't understand what it is you're doing. What do you mean there's 859 groups now and churches? How can that be? And, 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 and it's double, over 400 of them in the last 12 months? How can that be? That and, and I remember talking to one of my mentors in the disciple-making movement world, and he said, you know, we're hearing the following objections to this. When people hear about what's going on, he said, usually, some, a lot of times people say, that can't, here's the first objection, that can't be true. The first thing that, that, that happens is they begin to ask, that simply cannot be true. I don't believe that you've started over 400 groups this year in 12 months. How can that possibly be? Well, some people can believe that because... We talk about those kind of results, but other people that we're working with in the church planning movement, disciple making movement world are seeing thousands and thousands, even at 20, 30,000 groups start in, in, in two or three years time. And when those kind of reports come out, the first objection is some people just simply don't believe it. They said, I don't believe it's true. You're just making this up. You're just throwing, you're just throwing these numbers out there. Well, what my friends have said and what we want to say to anybody that has that objection is buy a plane ticket and come down with us. Find out if these things are true. Uh, if you don't want to take my word for it, just I'm not going to buy your plane ticket for you, though, uh, for a skeptic. But if, if you buy your plane ticket, uh, when we go down to do our next training, you're welcome to come with us, and you can see with your own eyes. And uh, it's as simple as that. It's like somebody said, it's exactly the same thing. They said uh, uh, that they had found the Messiah, John chapter 1, and Nathaniel said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And 
the other disciples didn't argue with him. They just said, come and see. Well, if, if, if you want to know if, if this movement is happening, buy your plane ticket. We'll be glad for you to come and come and see. But you know, the fact of the matter is, it is happening. And, and after a while, people do see and they say, okay, it's happening. But the second major objection to disciple-making movements is, you know, but if it's really multiplying like that, it can't be, it may be happening, but they can't be preaching the gospel. If they were preaching the gospel, if they were preaching the hard, strong gospel, if it was really the truth, the truth gets rejected. The truth is rejected. And so if it was really, it can't be the truth because if it was really the truth, it wouldn't multiply that fast. And then we say, well, do you want to see what it is that we're teaching? By the way, if you want to see, if you're wondering about that, go to worldmissionsevangelism.com, click on Discovery Bible Studies, click on About Us, then click on Discovery Bible Studies, and you'll see exactly what happens in our Discovery Bible Studies. All we're teaching people is that the Bible is the Word of God. I don't think that, is that an error? That the Bible is the inerrant Word of God, and it's the absolute authority in our lives. And then we're taking them in a 24-week 20 Bible study from... Uh, Genesis through the Gospels, where they see that God made the world, God created the family, man fell into sin, and a little bit of foundation in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, God's standard of righteousness, and then we introduce Jesus. And we see Jesus, his birth, his life, his ministry, and then we see his death and his resurrection. And it's a 24-week Bible study that uh, that introduces Jesus and introduces and basically says, Come follow Jesus. Jesus Christ is Lord. And when people that make that commitment, then uh, we, we tell them you need to be baptized to follow Jesus. And then those groups, groups form out of that. And out of that comes new groups, new churches, and so forth. Is that legitimate? Is that, is that okay? Is, is it all right to make disciples like that? That's not a heresy, is it? To say that Jesus Christ is Lord. He is God in the flesh and the Bible's the word of God. And the only way to be saved is to have him as your Lord. And here's how we're doing it. We're going to get you right in the word of God. Now, the first objection is it's not real. And then people go around and sure enough, it is real. You can't deny it. And then, well, it's not legitimate. They must not be preaching the gospel or it, it wouldn't be multiplying this way uh, turns out we are preaching the gospel. The gospel itself is preaching itself, and uh, it's multiplying. The third main objection is, I can't. My organization can't. I can't afford to change. You know, once people have got past, it's not really happening, and they say, oh, it is really happening. And then they get past, well, it can't be legitimate. It can't be really the gospel. Oh, it really is. The third objection is I just don't want to make any changes. I like the way my program is running. And you know what? We don't have any, any argument against that. There's nothing we can say about that. Uh, there, there's not one single thing that we can say because that comes down to an issue of commitment. You know, once you know that the Bible tells you that Jesus is Lord and you've received Jesus as Lord, and once you understand the Bible says, go and make disciples, then the question is, are you going to do it or not? And then if your position is, I'm not going to because it costs too much, there's no argument in the world because that's not some, that's not somebody that needs a new concept. That's somebody that needs a new commitment. And so um, that's uh, the three, uh, as my friend shared with me, he says, those are the three, the number three, number one, it's not real, but yes, it is. Number two, it can't be right, but yes, it is. And number three, it costs too much. It, I can't change. We're too committed to the way we've always done things. But I wonder if there's anybody watching this video today, watching this video blog, and you say, David, I've, I've been watching your video blogs and I'm hearing your reports and, and number one, sure, I would love to go down with you sometime and see this and be a part and uh, really get a taste of what this is all about. And, 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 and number two, uh, what you're saying about making disciples who obey scripture, who obey, Jesus Christ is Lord, there's no salvation in anybody else, and it's just a simple matter of reading what the word says and obeying it. And that's really what making disciples is and, and I'd like to do it. And you might say, and you know what? I'd like to know how to do that. Can, could, you know, the, is it possible 
that I could learn the very same uh, method of making disciples. And I'd be willing to make a change. I'd be willing to do something in a different way. I'd be willing to sacrifice my tradition about something in order to see a great harvest of souls. I'd be willing to, I would actually be willing to change in order to see a greater harvest of souls. And maybe that's you today. You say, is there anything we can, you know, can we do anything about that? Well, the answer is yes. And I just want to encourage you to go to our website, go to worldmissionsevangelism.com. Uh, you can look it over and then there's a place where you can send a message and send us a message and say, hey, I want more information about this. And maybe I'd like to be trained sometime. And, and you know, we'd see if we could facilitate that and put some tools in your hands, how you could start a discovery Bible study yourself to reach the lost, maybe in your family or your neighborhood, on your work or wherever. We'd be glad to help facilitate that if somebody says, I'd like to know how I could be a part of that. Well, uh, I appreciate you watching this today, and we're excited about what God is doing in Latin America, but we're excited about what God is doing all over the world and what he's doing right here. And uh, in the next video blog, I, I plan on uh, talking about some more issues that relate to uh, disciple-making movements, church planning movements, and some of the things that uh, I, I'm, I'm going to deal with some of the things that sometimes people kind of stumble over in this. Uh, there are some issues in church planning movements, disciple making movements, that sometimes uh, the people say, "Yeah, but what about this? What about that?" They have some, and they're legitimate concerns. I want to deal with some of that. What are the legitimate concerns about aspects of disciple making movements? And uh, we're going to deal with that in the next couple of blogs or so. So thanks for watching. I hope you'll tune in next week to our video blog again. And until then, God bless you and follow Jesus Christ. He will never lead you wrong. God bless.